Welcome to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. This is Master Jedi Soda. At this point, I'm not planning on reading any of the dialogue out loud. I'd probably screw something up, but if enough people want me to, if anyone ends up watching this, then I probably will at least give it a try after a part or two. Let's begin. Thank you. 
Not bad, honestly. The newspaper only costs 100 Mira, so 400 left over, 5 times the amount. Now while you're traveling around, if you hold square, it'll show the names of each area you can go from the screen you're on. And in this case, we're trying to make our way towards Roland. Now, I've played through this game a couple times, but I've never actually finished every single quest. Planning on doing it this time around, though. Here we have Roland, a pretty small town. Generally, everyone knows everyone who's here. Now, if you look at the upper right, the colors of the buildings denote what type of building they are. So you have green for general shops, orange for the orbital factories, red for the bracer guilds. Then you have blue for some of the hotels and inns, and purple for the churches. Generally, anything else, generally what's blank, will just be a residential area or probably something that you don't really need. I just can't help but think of the Persona series. I do love the localization in this, much better than some of the earlier ones, though I've only actually played through some in the second. Here the game provides some background information. It's not really necessary for going through the game, but it helps with understanding a bit of the world. Only 50 years since they've developed orphans, but they really do use them for just about everything.
Bracer notebooks are a rather nice wealth of information. Not only do they record everything to do with the quests that you'll get, they have a bunch of other information, including on Orbal Arts, the magic in this game, the elements that constitute a variety of spells, things like that. Training Retrieval, of course, has us running through the sewers. Here they provide a bit more information about what you use for magic. Not only, not only do you unlock slots to increase the magic ability you have, and to allow you to put more quartz in, the quartz being what allow you to use magic of different elements, the quartz themselves change your stats. Synthesize cords as well as unlock slots on your ordnance here at an orbital factory. To set them, you can do that wherever you are. The sepith you get from certain characters in some chests. You also get it from killing enemies. And you can exchange sepith for Mira. Generally, I avoid that. I prefer using it for unlocking the slots and synthesizing cords, and I just did that twice. She gave us enough to synthesize a few. Now, Estelle is the only character who can use a cords of any type in every slot. Other characters have certain restrictions on some of them. Joshua can only use a time elemental quartz in two of his slots, including his very first. So we're going to have to take that one. Now Shara is going to tell us to choose one that has recovery arts. Water is the one you want for that. I prefer having fire in addition. So, I'll synthesize that in addition to the water, but equip the water for now. Notice that gave her two arts. They only require one element of the water type, with the first one healing and the second doing water damage. Adding in the time gives us a speed boosting art, as well as a time damage art with a chance to kill in one hit. She says have both open a new slot, but she only gives enough to unlock one. Since Joshua has his first one restricted to a certain element, I'm going to open up his second. Now, also notice on the ornament on the bottom right, 
the lines that are connecting them. The metric you can use is selected by adding up all the elements of the chords that are connected by a line starting in that central one. So the longer your line, the more powerful magic you can use, or at least more easily, since it'll add up all the chords that are there. The second line that goes to the bottom right, it'll still add those two up for magic, and that could give you access to something you might not have in the first if you have different elements there, but it won't add those elements to the first set. Notice Estelle's is a shorter line on the left, she won't be able to use powerful magic as easily, but since she's not restricted to certain elements, it can be a bit easier to put it in for her. And I'll go ahead and equip the attack cords here. I love it when she gets dragged off, Joshua just sitting there watching it. This entire trip here, Estelle hasn't realized yet that we're not doing anything on paper. When we go into the sewers, the series of battles that will be provided are used as kind of a tutorial for how the different facets of battle work. She gives us three tier bombs, which do the same thing as the tier recovery art, recovering up to 200 HP. And the monster guide, once you finish a battle, it'll start to fill in information on enemies. Whether it's items that you get from them, some of the stuff that they provide, some of their stats. These are always handy. We've got a little HP to recover because of the HP courts, and some EP to recover for Joshua since we unlocked the slot. So the bar at the left determines the turn order. When you go to choose a command, it'll automatically fill in where that character should go next. And if you choose to attack an enemy that's too far out of range, not only will it show the icon, but it'll automatically move your character as close as it can. Just in case you're too lazy to use the move command. That's that then. Let's move out. It's 
also got a couple monster bones, could be used in certain recipes, as well as the Suppeth. Each enemy drops a certain amount. In this case, we got Earth, Fire, and Space. So our first enemy was a Dirty Rat. You can see some stats, not all of them are available since we haven't fought them multiple times. The elemental efficacy seems to determine how much damage they take from arts of that element. Now, unlike normal attacking, when you choose to use an art, the second icon doesn't show when you move next, but when your art actually takes effect. That goes both for you and for enemies, where when charging up an attack, their next icon will show when they're doing it, and you can see where that area should affect, so you can try to move out of the way or kill the enemy before they use it. You can also press square when you're targeting an enemy in the middle of the battle to see its name, its health, as well as the elemental efficacy so you can determine what arts you should use if you use any. Well that's all for now, next part we'll continue our trek through the sewers, thanks for stopping by.